My documentary is not a movie. My documentary is not a film. It is a mockumentary. It's what it was really like. It was crazy. And the way we made it was very much like the way the Australians shoot in this country. We were in the bush. There weren't enough of us. We had access to not enough, uh, no money. Not enough equipment. And little by little we went insane. Yarra Glen. Shit. I'm still only in Yarra Glen. Everyone gets everything he wants. I wanted a project, and for my sins, they gave me one. I hardly said a word to my girlfriend until I said yes to a breakup. When I was on the river, I wanted to be in the city. When I was in the city, I wanted to be on the river. I've been here two days now, waiting for something, a moment, getting softer. And every minute Camden leads this crew, he gets stronger. Each time I look around, the riverbanks move in a little tighter. I was going up Shit Creek and I didn't even know it yet. A week away and a couple of hundred miles up river that snaked through rapids and plugged straight into an idiotacy. It was no accident that I got to be the caretaker of Camden Corbett's memory, any more than being back on a film project was an accident. How many people had he involved? There were three others that I knew of, close enough to blow their last breath in my face. But this time he was in control. That wasn't supposed to make any difference to me, but it did. Shit, paddling down the arrow was like taking a long swim. I took the project. What the hell else was I gonna do? But I didn't know what I'd do when I confronted him about it. There was Nathan Godkin, the one they called Goddy, as not to confuse the two of us. He was riding in the Blue Beast along with Camden. He was wrapped too tight for the river, probably wrapped too tight for Melbourne. Ranks on the Mad Max was a surfer from the beaches of the peninsula. To look at him, you wouldn't believe he ever fired a weapon in his whole life. Candace Day, Deese we like to call her. She rode with me on the Orca and was shooting second unit documentary on the project. She wasn't from this shit hole. Light and water really put the zap on her head. Then there was Rowan, the priest as we called him. It might have been my film project, but it sure as hell was his vessel, the cosmic plane.
I was being ferried down the river in a vessel named the Orca, a type of plastic yellow canoe, pretty common sight on the river. They said it was a good way of shooting documentary footage without drawing a lot of attention. That was okay. I needed the air and the time. The only problem was, I wouldn't be alone. At first I thought they handed me the wrong project. I couldn't believe how overqualified this man was. Top of his class. About a thousand decorations. I'd shot him on video once before and it really put a hook in me. But I couldn't connect up the qualifications with this man. Like they said, he had an impressive career. Maybe too impressive. He was being groomed for one of the top slots of the Idiotacy. A rigger, semi-truck driver, circus trainer, bone carver, taxidermist, tattooist, musician, guitarist, audio and lighting technician, film production designer and art director, fire performer, pyrotechnician, bush survivalist and a mechanic. He was turning 35 on this trip up river. Why the fuck would he want to be here? I think this is where it ends. Yeah. Bye-bye canoe stays. <laughs> That's actually bye -bye. Yeah. Yeah. So uh, what's happened to the bye-bye canoe? Uh, well, the pole that I had on the back of it uh, didn't actually end up uh, putting little bolts on it so that it could actually twist and turn. So over time, obviously, never the going to break off. Just as we are getting under a log pretty well like this. And uh, yeah, so, but luckily we, we lost some contact with it as we went around the dark side of the moon. But with GPS and internet uh, radar technology, we've certainly been able to reacquire it. Uh, it wasn't as far away as we thought. In fact, it was right in front of our eyes, but it had a cloaking device at that stage until we could un untap it with a um, postcode. It was only known to Richard Nixon in basically 1974. But um, yeah, so we've just tied it on now. Bug it bowl. And, and because it closes it to the back of the boat now, it's sort of easier to manoeuvre around all the places and stuff like that. Yeah, so the journey continues. Did you stop to get some mangoes, Nate? No, I'm fine. Yeah, bloody mangoes! How's it saucy air, you know? Yeah! It's a mango corn, mango fuel, mango cream pie. Yeah, that's it. Yeah, we got that big glass, big mango, mango tacos. Oh, yeah. Well, yep. the camera's not going to pick up and now. It's fresh and crispy air. Mm. How cool it is. Mm. Uh, we should blaze up, shouldn't we go? Was, the air was fresh. Too fresh. <laughs> how's uh, how's our two ladies? Uh, Susie P and Susie Q. Susie P and Susie Q. Yeah, they, they picked up a friend. Who did they pick up? Piece of rubber. crew was mostly just misfits, rock and rollers with one foot in their graves. Oh, Daddy Glenn? Good. Just kicking back. Start ready for the start of the trip. I oh, just slowed down. Go to the pub for a couple of hours, really. <laughs> 
Jewish Harp Orchestra. How are you? Yeah, I'll just pop them. Nick, how are you feeling about today? Oh, I feel good. Yeah? Yeah, it's going to be great. Looking forward to it. Got to taste a few different beers today. Maybe we should go down and have a look. Another one in a minute. Good morning. Oh, yeah. You know, got the reception of the old omelette happening this morning. Try to get everyone up and about and nice and early, but right. see it's a bit past time. Right, <laughs> That's all right. Those right. omelets look great. How's it looking, Dan? They're on a rock. I want to see the fear in your eyes, you know, the complete unknown, you know. Oh, it could be this one, it could be. No, oh, yeah. no, the next one will be just as much fun as the first one. Yeah, we'll have a lot of fun, as we already are now, you know, the whole purpose of it. We're exceedingly blessed by the gods to have this much water going down there. Yeah. So, let's wait and see. No wonder Captain put weed up the crew's ass. 
The river was being paddled by a bunch of four-star clowns who were going to end up giving the whole circus away. That's pretty much what we did. And at the moment I'm in the Orca, my canoe, with uh, our trusty canoe wrangler Gus Hello. in the back, and Mr. Godkin Hi. is up the front. We can't show you this man's face. Little miniature gas chambers for your Barbie doll. And um, I'm in the boat again with Angus, and he's, he's behind you right now. I'm just gonna say I'm getting a little bit, a little bit fed up with him. He's like six days, and he's he drinks a lot of the evening, and when he gets drunk, he gets really abusive, and he, he's he's always um, picking on me because I wear a tutu. And I don't think that's fair because I'm just trying to express myself and who I want to be and who I represent, which is a scuba diving ballerina. That's all I've ever wanted to be. And he's just trying to undercut me all the time. And I just really appreciate these quiet moments when I can talk about it. Because I just want to get out of this boat. I just want to go home and see my family and make pizzas. That's all I want to do. Please vote me off. Please get me out of here. You, birds, I'm talking to you. You are not the beautiful plumage you wear. You are not the wings you fly on. You are the same organic, decaying, dead matter as all of us. You are not a beautiful creature of Mother Earth. You make me sick. You overeat, for starters. You are rotting, decaying, vegetable matter. Not until we've reduced ourselves to nothing can we become everything. We are the all-singing, all-dancing crap of the earth. Rejoice! 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 Okay, just keep moving! Just keep moving! Don't look at the camera! Don't look at the camera! Keep paddling! Keep paddling! Don't look at us! It's TV! This is television! Keep paddling! I'm gonna get some fucking mangoes, man. I'm gonna get some mangoes in here. I can smell them. There's gonna be a mango tree around here somewhere. I was a saucier, man. I'm gonna find some fucking mangoes and make a mango cream pie. Make a mango stew. Make a little mango coolers. Go over the cream pie. It's a fucking tiger! It's a fucking tiger in there, man! Never it's get a out of the boat. Absolutely goddamn man. right. God, Unless you were going God, all the way. God, he got off the boat. He nearly split from the whole fucking program. How did he get here? What bond did he make with Camden on their prior idiocy together? If he joined the Interrobangs, there's no way he'd ever get above Colonel. Camden knew he wasn't giving up. The more I began to understand Mr. Corbett, the more I admired him. Fly, my pretties! Fly! Uh, just watch the camera, okay? Fly, my pretties! Oh, Get the hand turtle! Okay.
Yeah, you want the same decaying dead organic matter as everything else. Fly bats, fly. That's the way. Oh, they speak English. <laughs> we can't stop here. This is bat country. The poor bastard will see them soon enough. All of a sudden, these bats started descending from the sky. Like bats. Remember that last half of acid? Yeah. I dropped it. <laughs> you know what? Wow, man. You dropped acid. <laughs> you are not the Gucci shirt you are wearing. You are not Chanel number five. You are not your tireless golf ball. You are not your My hot letter. shot. Dear mum. I'm afraid that you would have been worried not hearing from me these past weeks. But my situation here has become a difficult one. I've been officially accused a champagne filmmaker by the Interrobang Army. My accusers are under the influence of various substances and gone quite completely insane. I hope they don't all turn into vampires at once or we're in big Goes the front tip goes downhill, basically all the water comes in the front, flooding the whole boat. So basically we just kept flooding the boat. Just kept paddling it full of water? Going down there, of course. Basically, just paddle it full of water. water. We still stayed in. We <laughs> <laughs> sitting in it, we were flooded with water. <laughs> well, at least we didn't go sideways or tip it up. No, we didn't. We didn't go sideways, we managed to keep it straight the whole way. It was a long way. Get the guard. Go down! Woo! You haven't fallen out yet. What's going on? Woo! <laughs> 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 Fantastic, that's that's the best buzz of the whole the whole lot. I uh, couldn't see a fucking thing on the way through. And there was a shadow that I thought might have been a snag, so I paddled my truck and then my oar I got my oar back in front so I had to reach my hand down to uh, work out which way my paddle was. And then I started coming towards coming towards the lights and I knew it was gonna be okay. I could have landed this bit, I just you know I didn't want to show up. No, I just took the light jacket. Oh, yeah. That's good. <laughs> What's going on? Quick. Uh, quick lead in. Uh, so we've got the barbed wire canoe paddled by Camden and Nathan. And they're attempting to do the Pound Bend Warrandyte Tunnel. And it's complete and utter madness because this is probably a grade 3 rapid. 
and I can fairly confidently say that no one has ever taken a, a dinghy down here, let alone a fucking barbed wire canoe, so it should prove to be very interesting. And if they uh, live on the other side to tell the story, then uh, yeah, I'll, I'll be amazed. <laughs> oh, they've stacked it. <laughs> They're stopped up there somewhere. I think they're letting the barbed wire canoe go by itself. You know, like our eyes in the back of my head, so you know we could. Uh, and Buster was uh, giving us tips on, you know, steer, turn, left, right. He's gonna watch out and you know save the day. Always Buster. Always oh, Buster. Oh man. Yeah. Well done, mate. Well done, Buster. Save you. Easy. Easier than you thought, wasn't it? Oh no. <laughs> we got whacked on fucking rocks on this We got side. stuck about 20 That's meters right. in. Yeah. Bang! Yeah, we and really then the back just started through. going down, yeah. coming up with water. We actually got to a point where we thought. We might just be behind it. And, uh, Going into a back. Yeah. Ah! Awesome. Do a few 360s just for show, you know? Just for show. Yeah, yeah. Just for show. Yeah. Barbed wire yeah. made through the tunnel. Yeah. What? <laughs> that the fucking hell, that is. Bloody hell. Oh, seriously, I didn't think we were going to come out of that. No, I was really going to go back. Smashing up against the wall. Left right. I thought we were living there and I found a really nice place to like set, you know, the, like a mantle and stuff in there. Um, it could have, it's really homely actually. But they survived. Yeah, he he got saved it. it. He's probably saved the it. only fucking dog that's gone through there. Oh yeah, brave little feet around there. That's going to be the first dog to ever go through the <laughs> Yeah, probably. Oh, I don't know. First dog to go through pound, the ominously named Pound Tunnel ben, yeah. for dogs. Yeah. Dog Pound Bend Tunnel. Yeah. Uh, never, never get out of the boat. <laughs> never get out of the boat. Absolutely Dude, goddamn, goddamn right. right. <laughs> oh, man, you go to tunnel. Do a I do exist. Oh, yeah. Well, if that isn't a fucking crazy thing you can do with the barbed wire canoe, I don't know what. Who's got a smoke? Smoke? Anybody got a smoke? Anyone got a tailor? Like a big one about that. Yeah. Better than that. that Better than sex, huh? Yeah. <laughs> well, I want a bazooka smoke, that one. It's, yeah. I don't smoke that much, but friggin' hell, I need some... Come in, I got stuck on a cannon, you know? Just... Fucking mangles in there. It was all in the mind. Oh, yeah, we just went. Mate, I can't believe you guys. It was the way we had it on the river here of living with ourselves. We'd cut them in half with an oar and then give them a band aid. It was a lie, and the more I saw of them, the more I hated lies. Those boys were never going to look at me the same way again. But I felt I knew one or two things about Camden that weren't in the dust. Just unauthorized, you know, butchery services. Oh yeah, let's make a hint gate on the whip cage. Right, get your chains off, da 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 Nate, how was Susie Q and Susie P? Susie P and Susie Q behaved very well. Uh, I was really appreciative of the show. Thanks, guys. Uh, you know, because we've been working real hard through this war, and uh, it was nice to have some uh, some entertainment. Susie P and Susie Q, fine forms they are, semi forms, demi mannequins, hemi women. They're half the people they used to be. <laughs> but jeez, uh, they put on a show in there. Let me tell you. I just can't get the tune out of my head. <laughs>
Yeah. Who's gonna see it? Nobody was doing it. He's wet it up, guys. Oh, look at him. Always throw the best potato oh, back into the fire. Oh, this is the kind of potato you would put on time for. Sad broken. Bastard. And you know what we're doing? For fun. Because we've got no more fucking beer, man. Someone has to pay. People, people go insane without beer. <laughs> 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 okay. Beer, look at that crunchy sound. Yeah, great. Do that. Come on, he's going to play murder in the dark. Well, I hate the weapon, bitch. It's a grave. Oh, right. Oh, man. Axes. Only if you call it. Manic, bow saws, I wish you luck. I can move quick. <laughs> <laughs> Susie P! Are you alright? Hey mate, those guys are going to be so pissed when they realise that you've just made off with their last beer. Okay. Oh, you've got it, I'm sure it's treasure, what's the gold? They're going to want to be happy. They're going to want blood. And they're definitely going to want that. <laughs> so, shit mate. You better uh, skedaddle before they realise that it's gone. I, I think they know that it's gone. No way. <laughs> We've had a whole night, Peter. But tonight, <laughs> they're not going to go away with it. No. Okay, guys, let's go get it. Come to play better with the dog. that up with a little bit of French turf. I want to reskin my dog with human hair, man. We'll have to take out the belly button. Yes, we will. <laughs> Don't laugh when you're dying, man. That's very oh, morbid of you, you know. It's punishable by life. Yes. Uh, Maybe we'll I give you an extra testicle behind your left eyeball. The 
more they tried to make it like home, the more they made everybody miss it. Just start one under the I want the French to say, how did they do that? How did they do that? Um, well, we could. So anyway, basically, uh, someone asked me to wake the fuck up. Now I'm up. I've just come out. Uh, you know, we're at Birrarung Park, and someone's telling me drop my tent. So I'm going to go and ask Camden what the hell's going on. Day six. We finally find out that basically the itinerary that had been sent out through Park Victoria and that I had been told had been confirmed and the relevant information and informing of the local park rangers had been done so that we were allowed to have a one-off camping permit for these areas has now seemed to have been scrapped. Basically in terms of basically these park officers don't even know what the hell we're talking about. Now they've heard about it, now they like it, they think it's a great idea, but it's still absolutely no camping here. And now we're going to have trouble actually getting to fucking Studley. Well, getting to Studley Park is one thing, but actually staying there is going to be another one, but there's absolutely no camping there, they reckon, and absolutely no permit would be given because their local community there are very precious about their park, and basically if we camped there, we would make front page news in the local uh, community paper, which would be a nice little bit of publicity to sort of vouch for the fact that, you know, freedom is not all that's entailed in this world sometimes. But anyway, um, yeah, as long as we drop our tent, uh, we can just basically take our time, we can stay here for as long as we want. But yes, definitely I've got the numbers to go to Ben Park, I'm going to have to ring them and find out what the bloody hell it can be arranged for us to stay anywhere around that area. Day six, mate. <laughs> Day six. Can't believe I spent two months organising this and informing everybody at bloody Park Victoria about this over and over and over and over and over again, saying, is this all right? Is this all right? Is this all right? Can you make sure you can tell me this is all right? I'm going on Sunday, last Friday. Is this all right? Yes, 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 yes. Brilliant idea. We're going to give you, you know, full sponsorship because basically you're doing an educational thing for Victorians about the Yarra River. And we'd like to have that, you know, reinstated in the public image of Melbourne about the state of the Yarra. Now we find that the state of bureaucracy is well and truly endangered in these parks and god damn it there ought to be a shooting license for it. Not about all this red tape. It's just target, target, target. Anyway, yes, I'm very pissed off. But as long as we just drop our tent, we're okay, we can stay here for as long as we want. Okay. But yeah, tonight we'll find out, we'll work it out. We'll get there because we're doing it for the people, man! But not for parks we talk about. I was dreaming about boxing. Not happy. Hey, so was I. And it's really annoying, I suppose, because we just all sort of got up woken up this morning in a bit of a, you know, shock. And, um, and then we're just told to fucking drop our tents, like... I don't know, I don't see what the big deal is, you know, I mean, yeah, okay, I suppose we should, you know, drop our tents for the public, but this is not a proper camping ground, but, you know, I mean, we're well, didn't a unique we group, and um, apparently, yeah, we did have permission, and so they changed we, their mind. And if there was a problem, they should have come and told us last night, not fucking it, you know, in the early in the morning. So they changed them, their minds? Yeah, I reckon. Why did they change their minds? I don't know, maybe they were pissed off because we had the cars down here on, on in the actual park. Yeah. And we'd actually disobeyed a couple of rules um, with a little fire underneath the barbecue. Maybe a few of those little things, maybe that pissed them off. I don't know. Um, so they, so okay, so we're a little outside the, the the boundaries of what's acceptable in a suburb, but they haven't taken into consideration that we've been on the Yarra for a week. Mm. Yeah, they have no up. idea. And so they have completely misinterpreted the whole trip mm. from the beginning that's right which is what which happens. we've had for, we've i mean yesterday night maybe we, we we you know maybe pissed them off because they had actually prepared a campsite for us and opened the gates um but we thought they hadn't so we went and attacked them at nine o'clock at night um that probably maybe pissed them off at all you know at some point um mm. Maybe they just, yeah, they've never experienced something like this before and, yeah, don't know how to deal with it, but it's pretty fucked. And, um, yeah, they should just let go and let us do it, what we need to do and get our fucking trip done. So, so we've just had to drop the tents. Mm. 
literally so that anyone who's walking by in the park doesn't see our tent. Doesn't yeah. see a tent. That's right, because it's not no camping in the, in the park, which is... This park, how big is it? It's huge. This is a huge park. This is like a wildlife park, you know. I mean, it's, it's supposed to be the closest you get to running around in the bush, you know, and... I mean, who's going to be here at fucking before 10 o'clock in the morning anyway? He wasn't a bad All guy. He yeah, loved his friends sure, and they felt you know, safe with him. him week, saying, he was one of those guys that had that weird light around him. You just knew he wasn't going to get so much as a scratch out here. The fact that the bloke uh, turned up last night to open the gates before we got there would suggest that he's been in contact with some people. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Mm. Well, they're saying the main, di tri main, di the main difference about that is basically that Longridge Park is actually a camping ground. And, and even though we were in the wrong reason. one, you know, yeah. like we were actually in the wrong one. So pitching tents is, is, is doesn't go with sitting down and eating on these tables and lighting well, the fire. Well, yes, they don't want to stand to trend of people actually camping out here because it's a high profile inner suburb um, park which doesn't allow for, you know, camping. I pointed it out that the, the information tourist guide over there actually has pictures of people canoeing and camping. You're and joking. I said, well, look, oh, there's people that. saying that <laughs> there's a fucking, that. you know, yep. it, it says, look, people in tent. It's right here. Uh, so therefore, you've got the presumption that, okay, well, maybe your little right kids in tent, camping. we're allowed <laughs> okay. to camp here. Is it possible oh, that... And you know what you, you know what you said? I said, well, there's no sign saying that there's no camping here. And she said, yeah, but there's no sign saying there's no scuba diving. And I'm going, yeah, and there's no sign saying you can't hang yourself here, too. <laughs> I mean, far out, you know, like, what do you want? It's a park, for Christ's sake. The people are going to think that you can camp because of that information there. So do you reckon they've seen that fire and they've seen maybe a couple of uh, uh, marks the, They the have grass definitely and... seen the fucking marking that, um, you know, like, Rankin did a bloody good job getting that sealant out here and Nick was fantastic in bringing it out here and we thank him very much, but the fucking guy that drove him out here, Mr Craig, absolute fucking dickhead, decided to come out and... I don't know what his uh, impression was of actually taking it. Come and have a look, you know. It's a guy that uh, apparently is an absolute dickhead and, and Rankin doesn't even know why he was even with those guys at all. So one guy from the suburbs has come out to visit us last That's night. That's right, to help. To help us out by giving us some sealant for the boat. That's right, and he has, got somebody to drive him. He decided the best decided thing to, to do, do would be to drive in and start doing fucking burnout. All over the fucking grass. Now that is probably a big part of it, man. Oh shit, yeah. That's a big part of it. So they've seen burnouts. Yep, they've seen burnouts and just gone. Are these people associated with you? And we're going, no, not really. By about three degrees of separation, maybe. Which about is down. fantastic. Yeah. Now I'm going to get his number. I'm going to fucking blast him. If I see him, I'll punch him. I'll flatten his nose. Yeah. Dickheads like that. I mean, that, that jeopardise any chance of, you know, like, reconciliation of any sort. Okay, healthy folks, healthy people. We've got a nice little hunt for you. We've got bicycle, we've got canoeing, we've got little animals, we've got nice sunsets, and we've got people camping. <laughs> I mean, far out, you know, like, if that is, you know, here we go, camping. We, he's even got a bloody canoe there, saying, oh, yeah, we've been here, we're camping there. There's nothing here saying that we can't <laughs> camp here. So it's unbelievable. It's absolutely unbelievable. And apparently there's no sign saying here that uh, you're not allowed to you're not allowed to uh, scuba dive here either. Or hang yourself. <laughs> Alright, well that's basically it. This is the start of day six. My god, we've got a fucking long one today. Thirty-three kilometers. Um, we're gonna have to start making phone calls to see what we can do because apparently there's absolutely no camping at uh, Yarrow Bend. But, but I know, I know, I've been working on this for fucking two months and I've been telling these people this is what I'm going to do, this is what I'm going to do. I've been sending emails at the itinerary to every, every relevant party in that goddamn place and none of them, none of them has actually emailed me back and saying, no, nah, you can't camp there, no, nah, you can't, can't camp there at all. 
they said relevant arrangements had been made and that we would waive all of those sort of regards since we're making an educational film in Bandi Yarra. But uh, this has been educational in itself. and can understand why some people have a bit of a bloody hassle with uh, Park Victoria. But I'm going to find out today. All right. So, do you, what do you what do you reckon about the fact that the closer we get into the city, <laughs> the more trouble the more, there is. The, the more problems there are. I'm starting to get confused whether we're going down Sheep Creek or up and man. Melbourne's trouble. As soon as we get back there, I'm moving to fucking Woori Alec. Because <laughs> there's no problem there. It's peace, it's quiet, everyone's nice. In fact, there's no one there, so it's perfect. There's logs in the river, but hey, you know, it's better than rubbish everywhere. Or uh, people standing on the banks throwing rocks at you. Yeah, that's yeah. right. We, someone threw rocks at us? Yeah, there's been a, a rock was thrown at Rowan one day, and he just went... Like that. Yeah. yeah. Well, there were more of them than there were of us. Otherwise, we would have, you know, gone and punched him in the throat really hard. Mm. Or kicked him in the kneecap, you know. We had a shovel on board, so I wanted to... But nah. It's funny how, as we get close to Melbourne, you know, the, pro the, um, the obstacles for the barbed wire canoe just get... Uh, they just get different. Mm. But there's always obstacles every day. Mm. And it, as every day progresses, the obstacles change, the hurdles... Mm. You know, the hassles. Not a hassle, no. <laughs> yeah, slightly hassles, but... Yeah, it's, fun it's, it, it's funny that the, the plight of the barbed wire canoe doesn't really change. It's always going to be a barbed wire canoe, wherever it is. Whether it's in... Whether it's at the head and top of the river, or whether it's in the mouth of the river. Holy shit. We're taking a barbed wire canoe to the mouth of the uh, river. Fuck. <laughs> So we're at Dites Falls and we're all freezing and shivering and uh, if the camera rocks a bit that's because I'm fucking freezing as well. Cam? Yeah, I'm fucking freezing man. We're trying to do this for the people. It's fucking been a long day. They said it was going to be about 30 degrees today and bloody bullshit. Stunning. Oh. That's Melbourne. Yeah, I know. So it's about bloody 15 degrees at the moment. Wind chill factor, especially with the cold water. Ah, oh, criminal. Absolutely criminal. And we're waiting for the barbed wire canoe to come round. I've nominated, or Nick nominated himself to ride it today. Uh, Candice has taken over just before, so I've taken Kristen's little vessel. And that's a pain in the ass. Fire out. The way they design, design, design things these days, unbelievable. Yeah, we're all absolutely buggered, tired, exhausted for reasoning their nuts off. 33 k's. Yep, 33 k's today. No, well it's going to be more. It's going to be about 35 k's. It's almost as big as day two. Yep. <laughs> day Bloody two. <laughs> Day two. Oh, oh day two. <laughs> I ate day two for breakfast. At least day two. On day was six. Hot. You know, it's warm. It's fucking warm, you know? Yeah. Oh. So, yeah. I don't know. I, I really don't know if I'm going to be capable of taking it down here because I'm just so fucking cold. 
John Dan. How you going, mate? Didn't say anything. Well, I don't know, mate. At the moment, I'm just really cold. <laughs> day six. Day six. It's been a tough day. Very tough day. And uh, yeah, looking forward to uh, getting out of my wetsuit and sitting around a fire and, uh, and relaxing. But uh, yeah, who knows how long this barbed wire canoe is? How far away it is? It's just so cold. I don't know if I'm going to have the proper reaction time to actually pull it together. We'll just see when it comes, I guess. Yeah. I might try and take a front seat or something. It might make it interesting. It might make it more difficult. I don't know, but it's friggin' freezing. God damn you people! This is how fucking much work we've been trying to do to bring back the barbed wire canoe, man. Jesus Christ. Not easy. Nah! And you people will never know unless you do it yourself how bloody hard it is, I'll tell you what. Might be a little bit of a novelty item to look at and go, oh, that's a bit of a funny little joke. But no, it's been very, very serious at times when we're not joking. And we're not joking now! This is serious. Oh. Back to the agenda. How you going? My testicles have disappeared somewhere into my stomach region. I've never been this cold in my life. Yeah. And oh, I just want my hot water bottle and a big thing of fish and chips. And my mum. Dan, just tell us what's happening. Oh, well, basically we've decided we've got another half an hour until we wait for the barbed wire canoe to get down here, so we're going to build a fire right here against the rocks. Try and keep ourselves warm because we've got a good chance of getting a bit of hypothermia if we're not careful. It's going to get dark. It's about, uh, I'm not sure what time it is, about 7, seven o'clock or something. Um, yeah, it's just going to get colder and colder as we wait. Mm. So it's worthwhile doing something like this just to keep yourself warm. If we wait, and then we've got to go down the freaking thing. Then we've got another, yeah. yeah. Oh yeah, then we've got another bloody you know, three or four kilometres. Just go until we get to Collingwood Children's Farm. It's not that far. It's still, when you're this cold, that just seems like a bloody eternity to get through. Yeah. yeah. Oh, yeah. feeling, I think we're all feeling a little bit better now. Yeah, a little bit. Almost an emergency situation. Oh yeah. yeah. Hypothermia was pretty close to being over set in. Part of me was afraid of what I might find and what I would do when I got there. I knew the risks, or imagined I knew. But the thing I felt the most, much stronger than fear, was the desire to confront him. Good morning, good people. The people we are doing this for. The barbed wire canoe is now set off to take off on its seventh day of the journey. Here we are camped at uh, Collingwood Children's Farm, which was my original planning for the campsite. But I thought it might be in a little bit too long of a day, you know, and then get into diet falls and going off it and stuff like that, and we'd leave it till the morning after and stuff. But no, it's 
Dudley Park boat out completely fell out since we had a bloody digger doing burnouts on bloody Billerung Park the other night. Uh, we totally stuffed up any sort of negotiation we could have had with our Park Victoria there. So um, yeah, luckily we got this. The fantastic people at Children Collingwood Farm. It's great to wake up with a whole bunch of horses over the fence looking at you going, you hungover, stupid, bloody idiot. And uh, yeah, but they're wonderful. And it's a wonderful little farm and we recommend it to everybody to come down here and have a look. But the other really weird thing is that we've been doing all of this camping in parks and stuff like that. And here we are on a farm in, in Collingwood. You know, <laughs> bloody, absolutely crazy. It's a beautiful place. And then tonight we're actually going to be staying on here on the island. So, yeah, the weather looks pretty good. We're actually going to be working against the tide today, which is a bit of a bugger. And also the wind seems to be picking up and moving exactly in the direction against us as well. So it's going to be against the odds in all the ways. But, uh, yeah, it's a beautiful day to be 35. I'm glad to be alive. Um, and Buster, I guess, would be 35 in dog years now. And I think he's really pulled his weight. Even though he didn't go over Diet Falls yesterday, I don't blame him. That damn place looked way too scary. But uh, so, yeah, St Helios, beautiful place. Might book it out for an occasion and just live there. It'd be nice to live there just completely by ourselves. It's a wonderful, wonderful, wonderful house. And gland. It's huge! That place is bloody huge. It's one of the biggest acreages in, in Melbourne by itself. And it's one of the oldest sort of uh, buildings that we've got. And I want to try and renovate it and make it into fucking apartment. <sighs> How many more apartments do we friggin' need? Financial redevelopment and bloody social, you know, like uh, financial security just for the benefit of having another apartment for investment when nobody can afford a bloody rent of it anymore. It's just ridiculous. And we're not going to bloody well put up with it. No way, we leave that completely as it is. Alright, so, oh, the horses are going out for a feed now. But, uh, this is uh, one of our last camp. As you can see, the typical Australian breakfast. And, um, uh, half a hamburger, a dim sim and some chips and a plate. It's uh, sort of our indulgence last night. Didn't want to do any cooking after what we went through yesterday. And uh, the wonderful crew, the wonderful crew. Fantastic people all around. I love them all. They're, they're the best. Oh, done. Two more days, and I think everybody's uh, not really looking forward to it actually finishing. And I think I think we might just get out of the boat and start heading for South America or something like that. Yeah, Venezuela it sounds like a great place to go, and then we can start going down the Amazon with the barbed wire canoe. But uh, that's in later days. After tomorrow. We'll see how the day goes. All right. Hello. Oh, they ain't supposed to go so much. See, I'm not the captain of the boat, so I don't have to worry about that. Oh. You don't have to worry about it. Who's the captain of the boat? 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 Oh my god. <laughs> oh my god! No! So the barbed wire hits Herring Island. <laughs> that one was almost over, guys. Soon the world there will be a peaceful revolution across Australia. People realise like the barbed wire has actually been brought and I'm totally leave! Unbelievable, man. We haven't sunk. We haven't lost the barbed wire canoe. It hasn't broken up. Indestructible, mate! Absolutely. Yeah, fuck this down from the water. Isn't the boat tied up? No, I'm about to return it to barbed wire canoe. Oh, look, we are, we're trying to get, uh, they're asking you about this barbed canoe, how is it connected to the, you know, the Aboriginals and, and yeah. the journey and... Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, yeah, we well, need to... Yeah. Oh, right, yeah, yeah, yeah. Australian, this is an Australian uh, adventure. Oh, and a, a typical Australian adventure, uh, <laughs> iconic adventure, but totally in reverse. It's almost like a. Uh, in reverse. Yeah. Because <laughs> usually you stand up Chip Creek in a barbed wire canoe without a paddle. We've got the proof that we've been up there, we're bringing it back. Some people are sitting on the boats. Yeah. Oh, yeah. <laughs> 
I might take it down the other. Yeah. I think I might take it down the other, the whole way. From the top, all the way, and I don't care how long it takes, I'll do it. And uh, yeah, then a friend said, oh, I think I might come along with you. Mm -hmm. And then he told another couple of people, and they started rolling. The more and more people started getting involved. So that meant I had to rebuild the boat. Um, I had people coming on board, and I thought, well, I'm going to have to actually organise this properly. I'm going to have to discover about more about the Yarra River. I've been a resident of Melbourne for you know nigh on 34 years, 35 off today, and um, yeah, went through the internet and really um, had a look at all the details about the length, the flow rates, and how it runs, and yeah. the sort of temperature and stuff like that. And managed to get quite a few phone numbers to Melbourne Water who are in charge of the Yarra River, and they gave me a really good distinction about it. And then started. Um, finding out more about the Aboriginal stories, about the, uh, how the actual Yarra uh, River was built. This island that we're on at the moment, the Herring Island, is actually an environmental sculptural park, and the barbed wire canoe is actually going to be kept here as a permanent sculpture. Um, and the coup, what they're going to do is, is build a totem pole, carve it out so it actually has um, the native totem animals of the plants of the Yarra uh, River all the way down to the um, Wang, The more I talk to them, the more they laugh. They said, "Don't." You know, it's a very, very Australian Irish thing to do, but it also teaches all of Australians to be more about you know, we're being clear up and shit creek in the barbed wire canoe. Because the Aborigines have been up the shit creek in the barbed wire canoe quite a few times. Well, I rode in the boat with the barbed wire canoe for most of the way to Camden, and um, I was used mainly for steerage. Um, so, you know, if uh, when we went down the rapids, particularly. Um, Camden would just stick a pole down my back and gaffer tape it on and put me out the back and use me to steer us through the rapids, which helped a lot. Right. I wore a stack hat, so safety first. Um, and that was, that, that, was, that was my role in the boat, apart from you know, building up some, uh, some upper body strength, you know, along the way. And, um, well, I wanted to bring something to the adventure as well, and it was um, about as ridiculous as it could be dragging a bar wire canoe down the Yarra. So I thought um, well, that we'd go down with a, a pink tutu <laughs> as well, um, just to freak everybody out. That's a little bit different. Yeah, yeah. Um, just in case that, just, just, yeah, just something a bit fetching and um, for a bit of ballet as well down the river. A bit of a dance down the yeah, river. So. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> yeah. Because it was a, there were some peaceful stretches um, where we just had to go to float along and, uh, and do a bit of dance. We got into camp very late sometimes. End up paddling in a. Um, or just as darkness was falling, and so yeah, can, yeah, we you know spent some time meditating around the fire together, and, and um, we lost track of time though, really, and, and, and that was that was what we were something we were all willing to do, lose yeah, track of time in the last few days, and so yeah, we always made it up in time for porridge because that's one of the most important times of the day. <laughs> um, yeah, but um, yeah, time didn't really matter anymore. first night we, we just got up when we did and got ourselves together and uh, paddled along and followed the sun yeah uh, <laughs> he's, he's had a wonderful time I can tell by his eyes <laughs> oh yeah no. what happened to you on the, on the journey well the river was connecting the whole way down and teaching all of us through this rites of passage because it was really basically a bunch of men getting together and going out there and facing the unknown getting to know each other and know the river and the river was showing us the whole way how to um, adapt and see the wildlife and it was just spiritually it was so fulfilling um, at one stage the river was just pure communication and all I could see was we come out of this beautiful nature and the first time we hit civilization it was the river basically was saying to me, look, I can't keep everything in here alive if you keep putting all this stuff in it, this rubbish and trash. Yeah. I've got to hand it to every soul that's been alive.
along this river, planted a tree and cleaned it up because you know, I could see all their work. To me that was, you know, it gave a little bit of hope. Yeah. For a journey, yeah, this is just a rites of passage and uh, we had to go through some really good stuff and some, there was, we were all tested one yeah. way or another and, you know, we were found wanting more. And I couldn't have, looking back, you know, I'm quite happy to have been a part of this mm. great adventure, you know, I've got, not only if I learned a little bit about myself, but I've managed to learn so much through everyone on this trip, yeah. everyone's given and shared, and knowledge-wise, yeah, that's this is cool. yeah. It's like, a, yeah, being able to listen to, to nature again. Oh, yeah, yeah. It's to be in nature, yeah. not just to turn up for a day and unravel a bit <coughs> and go home to bed again, mm. You're, you weren't there, wasn't it? <laughs> you were out there. Wonderful. Thank you very much. Sounds Thank like a wonderful experience. Thank no you. Hi, Dan. I'm very well. That's good. You're looking well. Then what happened for you along the river? What was one of your experiences? Well, I think um, in essence, for me, what the trip was about was um, getting a group of people who who didn't really know each other all that well. There was definitely people who knew each other beforehand, and and it was a real a real bonding experience. Mm. And there's yeah, something that we could really share and. Um, I remember for the rest of our lives, I'd, I'd, I'd say. Yeah. And um, yeah, there was. Um, I think for me as well, as far as like the spiritual side, the river uh, it filled me with a great calmness. Like there was moments there where I was just paddling along, and um, and oh yeah, my mind was completely blank, and I was just in this yeah, just total happiness. Oh, that sounds wonderful. It's, uh probably don't get much of a chance to bond like that, you know, um, when you're um, in your normal routine with, no. with guys. Uh, yeah, no, no, um, it was it was definitely a, a unique, a unique experience. Okay, thank you very much. Thank you. Everything I saw told me that Camden had gone insane. The place was full of misfits, clowns and day trippers. If I was still alive, it was because he wanted me that way. It smelled like slow death, malaria, nightmares. This was the end of the river, all right. Sand, man! The sand in the tent, man! Oh, man! It's all green here and shit, and it's in my pants! I can't stand sand, man. If you want to put sand in my hourglass, tip it upside down, and just give me some time, man. I wouldn't play Monopoly with you, cause you'd be the shoe, and I'd be the little doggy who gets knocked right off the ball, man. But I'll play you chess sometime, and I'll switch my rook your king. I'm sad, man. Oh, I can feel the beat. It's in my head. It's beating hard. I want some fucking mangoes, man. Eight days and I haven't had one fucking mango, god damn it. Someone's gonna get their fucking head ripped off if I don't get a goddamn mango! Where I see ah! the chip! Sorry. We're gonna be outside crime casino and we're gonna prove to the people that we have the barbed wire canoe. No longer necessary to think we're all up shit quick. And you people will never fucking know how much fucking hard work it was to do it, you fat bloated bitches! Morning. Morning. Um. How did you first meet Camden? Wow, that was through a dream, believe it or not. I had this 
amazing dream about a necklace and uh, I knew exactly what it would look like and so I went out to a shop in Fitzroy Street, Smith Street or something and found these beads that were, I haven't got the necklace here but I do have it but they were perfect and then later that day I met Camden and then he made up some wire from a piano and made the whole necklace for me, finished it off so this is that was how the connection started and yeah I met him as he was selling his bone carvings at a psychic fair and a good example was the, the mannequins in the barbed wire canoe because Camden rang me up and he goes mate I get some 44 gallon drums from your barbed wire canoe and my first thought was no I, you don't want to put drums that have had chemicals in the river mm. you know because you don't want to there's enough pollution in there. God, it's a beautiful one. Taking them back to the people today. Can't wait to see the looks on their faces. Uh, we've had enough of these stinking goddamn women. They have followed us all the way down the river. And we've tried to purge them of their mortal sins and their evil, 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 wanton desires. We've had enough of them. What do you reckon, on there then? And Susie Q, I think you are the most filthy, disgusting women I have ever seen. It is time for you to wash yourselves for good. We cast you into the filthy, stinking water of the Yarra. You may cleanse your bodies there. Okay. On the river, I thought the minute I looked at him, I'd know what to do. But it didn't happen. I was shooting him for days, not under guard. I was free. But he knew I wasn't going anywhere. He knew more about what I was going to do than I did. If the producers back in town could see what I saw, would they still want me to film him? More than ever, probably. And what would his people back home want if they ever learned just how far from them he'd really gone? He broke from them, and then he broke from himself. I'd never seen a man so broken up and ripped apart. Howdy, folks. How's the trip been going for you? It's been moment? going great. It's been going great? You're Absolutely. loving it? Absolutely. It's yeah. been a challenge. Um, what are we on? Day eight. We're nearly there. It's weird being in the city. Being in the, you know, in the bush, on the Yarrow, along the banks all the way. I think I probably preferred the earlier stages of the, of the journey. Yeah. Um, but, you know, we're back and uh, feeling pretty, uh, pretty buff around the shoulders. <laughs> so you reckon you're a bit hooked on canoeing then? Oh, I fucking love it, man. And the, the river, I, in fact, right now I'd rather be on the river than on the land. I'm having more fun on the river. Cool. And here's so, the... I've been to abuse the crowds. Well, so I'd say, all we have to do is start the French Revolution <laughs> in Melbourne. And we have talked to all the girls. And as soon as they are out in deep water, they scuttle their boat and throw their coaches away and claim freedom for Melbourne. So it's very, very good. How do you feel being part of the, the, oh, the French Revolution second time around? The guillotines are all very, very nice and sharp. Ready to go. It's chop, chop, chop. It's a beautiful day for it, I tell you. Blood spurts out the end of neck. Ah, <laughs> yeah, wonderful day. Beautiful. Say yeah. goodnight, Josephine. <laughs> they life. Even when I'm in a tower, even dog will be wrapped up in pipe wire. Yeah. That he does not like to sit on my shoulder, because he knows he's not a parrot, he's a dog. 15 degrees. Well, in the right weather conditions, it could be achieved. It could be. Commercial bird. This is a bird. This bird for another purpose. Actively. All right, we got police escort in the sky. <laughs> Check it out, man.
underneath the um what do you think that means gas fell ground below I no sewage line underneath there'll be no discharge they were gonna make me an executive producer <laughs> for this and I wasn't even in their fucking production company anymore Everybody wanted me to do it, him most of all. I felt like he was up there, waiting for me to take the pain away. He just wanted to go out like a sailor, standing up, not like some poor, wasted, ragged-ass renegade. There we are, Westgate Bridge. Even the river wanted him gone. And that's who he really took his orders from anyway. way to stop just in the fin finish line it's just there mate I'm not stopping now yeah I'm considering Safety on for your behalf and the public's behalf because we don't know what the heck's going on. Yeah, yes, all sure. they can see is a couple of canoes going. Yeah, well, what time a couple of canoes? You've got one. Well, yeah. they, also the CEO from Victorian Channels. Yeah, yeah. seeing what was going on. He's yeah, yeah, yeah. Like, is he going sick? Yeah. This graph. What the way to end the trip? Let's go, man. Charles, excuse me. Uh, she's alright, no, I'll give you a call. Okay, just what I've got to update for the week, though. Do you require their, um, their medals? Negative. Sorry, sorry, sorry. Okay. Negative? Negative, I'm here. Yeah. Right. Yeah, no, we, we knew that, but it was just one guy that charged yeah. off. We tried to call him back and bloody, you know. We were well. trying, that's the, it's ridiculous. Are you doing that? You know, we we told him before we actually had been entered into the channel that we, we've got to keep away from the shipping containers. Stay on the right hand side. And you all such is what you see around here. Yeah. 30 metres clear. Yeah. 30 metres to 30. 30 metres. Exclusion zone, 30 metres. Any wall structure, even coming underneath them hell, uh, them pipelines over there. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Right. Me, uh, have permission from Harbour Control. You've got them guys over there in that tower, what you see. Yeah. Uh, yeah. They've got to know about it. Right. I don't know if can come and get into it. Yeah. 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 Ye
Yeah. Top of the hour. Uh, what's that somebody told me? Wuri. Yeah. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. We've, it's been an eight-day expedition, the whole length. These boats go yeah. Just uh, watch out for Buster. We just found him strolling across the road. He nearly got hit. Oh Jesus. That's what we're just saying. I said that to him when we were on the thing. I said, why did you go on the other side of the river? You should have stayed with us. Yeah. Uh, just play a cosmic yeah, plane's going all the way. We're in a bloody dock lounge, you know, thing. No, it That's shouldn't be there. Plane. Mm -hmm. Is there any chance of uh, fines or anything like that? Well, that's, that, that's not up to me. I'd uh, probably say you get a warning. Yeah. Yeah. I'd say you get a warning. Oh, good. I thought we'd get all get out of here, Craig. What are we doing here now? Bloody bowing. Where do 
to nothing to carry this dog. So send me my anger. Take too many devils at my door. That I will end up. Ridiculous. 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 Ridiculous.